Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Tiffany, or Tyler Burns, your homeschool mom. And in this video, we're going to look at another cookbook. This is a new cookbook for me. So I have not tried all of these recipes. I've just tried a few. I do enjoy a lot of the recipes in this cookbook, not all of them, but we're going to be looking at the Anne of Green Gables cookbook. This is written by Kate McDonald, who was the daughter of Dr. Stuart McDonald and Ruth McDonald. Dr. Stuart McDonald was L.M. Montgomery's youngest son. So she had two living sons. This is the daughter of the youngest. So she has a connection to the, to the family. She's part of the family. And she, uh, she's part of the family's board that runs uh, Montgomery's legacy and whose married name was in fact McDonald. She just, that's what she's known for the books. So most of these stories, this book was a second publishing when it was originally published there was a few less recipes and the author herself had not had children yet. So she decided to add some stuff after she had kids. So let's go over this. This is very much based on for children. I was wrong in my introduction when I said the other books besides the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory uh, cookbook were not for children. This is actually geared at kids because they definitely imply you had to ask your parents and stuff like that. So let's go through the recipes here. It has a lot of pictures of the heritage site. So I kind of give you this. This is one of the back doors of the heritage site of Anne of Green Gables. They rebuilt the a um, rendition of the farmhouse where Ellen Montgomery lived and where she based Anne of Green Gables because her uncle tore it down because he was pissed off at her for being a popular author in the turn of the century. So yeah, her uncle just kind of tore it down because he was out of spite. So they rebuilt it. There's a huge heritage site there on Prince Edward Island. I hope to go back. We have been there. I hope to bring my kids there. So let's move on to this story. There's a lot of pictures of it in this house, in this book. So there's a bunch of cooking terms and different things in the beginning. So here are the recipes. So the first recipe, we have not tried this yet. It is on our list. This is puffy apple dumplings. These look really, really good. Um, and basically it's a dough with an apple filling. So you stuff it and then I believe it's fried. Nope, it's baked. So it's a little baked apple dumpling. Looks very, very good. Definitely have to try this at some point. So as I yawn, this is the recipe we actually had in fact tried. This is their sunny, sunshiny corn souffle. So this is egg whites, um, corn. We added more uh, bell pepper. This calls for just a tablespoon. I think we got added half a bell pepper. My husband likes bell pepper. It's really, really good. If you're very, if you like corn chowder, it has really. If you add more pepper, it has that same flavor to it. So, but basically, it's a white cheese sauce with egg whipped egg whites and um, and egg yolks. The egg yolks are whipped in the sauce as well. So it's really, really good. It's really rich. We have tried it. Yeah my husband it, it's popular in our house so it's definitely a recipe we would try again this is the light and creamy vanilla ice cream now i thought about trying this this is you do not need an ice cream maker to make this we happen to have one so i decided to use it for my daughter's birthday which as of filming that's what today is this is not being filmed anywhere near 2022 this is july end of july of 2021 on my daughter's second birthday she's currently sleeping my adorable little two-year-old just turned two today we're very very proud of her but I made some of these recipes for her birthday so that's why I'm just going to cover it here this is really good um, I have not tried this we have an ice cream machine so I used a different vanilla recipe to make vanilla ice cream using our ice cream using our ice cream machine but this does not need one and uses far less eggs than I made in mine because it requires a single large egg I used six in the recipe that I made so, and it only does four to six servings. So it's just kind of a light, um, probably a soft serve ice cream. So next one is something again that's on our list is a tantalizing raspberry tarts. Those look good. Definitely look like something you could have at a tea party or just kind of entertaining friends. And then it shows one of the, it such beautiful pictures. This is the back into the haunted wood, I believe is where that leads. So next recipe in here. This one I'm at two minds about. This kind of sounds slightly disgusting to me and sounds slightly disgusting to my husband. Um, this is Gilbert's Hurry Up and Dinner. 
hurry up dinner. This is mashed potatoes in a mountain meal white sauce with frozen peas and either canned salmon or canned tuna. So yeah, not exactly appealing if you like that kind of thing. But again, it's very New England where they have a tendency to do a lot of mashed potatoes. So the next thing in here is Martime Ginger Snaps. Now when I showed this to my mother-in-law, she liked this. I don't like ginger. So if you like ginger and like gingerbread, these probably would be a good thing. So next recipe. I can move on to the next recipe here. All right, this is Diana Berry's favorite raspberry cordial. This is on my list to make. This looks really good. It's, um, I've never had a raspberry cordial. It's sugar and water and essentially it's almost like a raspberry, raspberry lemonade or raspberry juice because it's frozen unsweetened raspberry sugar lemons and water so it's almost like a ra it's like a raspberry lemonade so it looks really good the next recipe is marilla's plum pudding which oddly enough does not actually contain plums it contains currants and raisins and nutmeg and cinnamon and walnuts and molasses so it looks like an interesting recipe we may make it it's not high on my list i'm not used to working with molasses so it's not a big thing the next one looks very good because it's chocolate cake. So this is chocolate goblins food cake. Who does not like chocolate cake? I'm a chocoholic, so is my husband, and so is my child. So let's move on. So this is Anne's liniment cake. This looks good. This is not a liniment cake. If you're familiar, that's a medical thing. That alludes to Anne's bad baking and putting a medical thing instead of vanilla, instead of vanilla sugar, I believe. Uh, into a vanilla cake. So that's what that is. It looks really good. It's an actual vanilla cake. So let's move on. This is Miss Stacy's back baked macaroni. This looks like a great recipe. I use Alton Brown's baked macaroni cheese. It contains onions. So that's preferable to my husband. So this, however, looks really good for kids. It's just macaroni, uh, grated cheddar cheese, flour. It looks like that, yeah, they make a white. I'm assuming, yeah, you make a basic white cheese sauce and uh, you add paprika and macaroni and you bake it. It's really good. Um, ours, the only difference primarily is the fact that I think there's ground mustard seed uh, and onions in ours. So moving on, this is another on our list. This is Ruby Tea Biscuits. So you use, uh, basically you're making little biscuits with raspberry, with uh, raspberry jam, I believe. Yeah, red jam or jelly. So it could be raspberries or strawberries or whatever you want. And then we have... Now this is definitely not on our list. This is White Sands scalloped tomatoes. Me and my husband do not like raw tomatoes. We are not the hugest tomato fan, so this would not be something that would be on our list. If you do love tomatoes, this looks like a fantastic dish to try. So let's move on to what amounts to be a BLT on a homemade biscuit. So this is Matthew Cuff's, Cuffbur's uh, yummy biscuit sandwich. This might, might be something we try minus the, you know, the tomatoes. Again, me and my husband happen to not like raw tomatoes. Let's move on here. So this is moving on. She separates the sections into Anne of Green Gables, Anne of Avonlea, uh, Anne of the Windy Populars, and then her own, her grandmother's own recipes. So this is moving on to Anne of Avonlea. This is Davy and Dora's Monkey Faces. So these are basically a mini molasses muffin that contain molasses and cinnamon and cloves. And then you add raisins, so they're little things. I'm not sure this is on my list. Again, I'm not huge on molasses. The next thing is something I will not touch. My mother-in-law would. She loves egg salad sandwiches. I cannot stand egg salad. So this is political egg salad sandwiches. So if you like egg salad, these probably would be good. I think they're disgusting. Personal opinion. The next thing is something I actually have in my fridge right now that we've made for my daughter's birthday. This is the old fashioned lemonade. Now, what this is, is you make a lemon syrup with sugar, water, and lemon zest. And you let that boil, and then you let it cool, then you add lemon juice. I admit, I did, a, I squeezed like three lemons I got from the grocery store, then I used regular lemon juice. We actually had to run out again and get more lemon juice. Uh, because the grocery store lemons, at least around here, do not get a lot of juice. So you add the, it's what, like two cups of um, lemons, let's see. 
no, actually, no, one and a half cup of lemon juice. You make this lemon syrup with, let it boil with sugar and water and the lemon zest, and then you let it cool, you add the lemon juice, and then you have the option of adding, when we did this, we added this grenadine syrup, which makes it pink. It actually makes it a dark pink. It's just a syrup that you add. It has a kind of a little bit of a tart uh, flavor. It's used in mixed drinks. I think it would have been something that would have been used to make Shirley Temples when I was a kid, which was essentially this syrup and uh, what we thought was cherry syrup. It's this grenadine syrup and 7-Up. Something I wouldn't give to my kid because we don't do soda. But this lemonade was really, really good. So you make this syrup and then you put it on ice and you add more water. So it's really good, uh, highly recommend it. It doesn't make too much. It makes like a large mason jar full of it. And you only use like a fourth of a cup per serving of the, and you add like two thirds of a cup of water. So it's really good. Then you have a slended lettuce salad, which looks very good. This is essentially a thousand island dressing that does in fact use, no, oddly enough, there's no fish in this. So it uses egg and mayonnaise and ketchup and milk and pickle relish and chopped green pepper, interesting, and dehydrated orange onion flakes. So essentially that's what this is. It's a salad with a thousand island dressing. I do believe normal Thousand Island dressings contain anchovies. So the saucy chicken, which actually looks really good, even though I don't use chicken pieces, I have a tendency to just use breasts. So this looks kind of a sweet and sour kind of flavor. It contains ketchup. And then this is on our list to try. This is the thick and creamy vegetable soup. It looks really hearty. Uh, at the time of this filming, it's July. So it's way too hot in the South American Southwest right now for something soupy. We're avoiding soupy. Uh, it's definitely on my list for winter. So by the time you see this, I will have tried this recipe. I may add an addition though. This just looks really good. So I have no doubt it's gonna be a great recipe. So let's move on to, this is something I will not try. This is cucumber boats or cowcumber boats. So if you're into cucumbers, I'm not, I like pickles. My husband likes cucumbers. He doesn't like pickles and a, what amounts to be a pasta, tuna pasta salad. This does not look appealing to me. If it does, I mean, it might look appealing to you if you like cucumbers and cold macaroni salad, which I don't. This I have tried. This is um, Miss Irving's delicious shortbread. So this is a basic shortbread recipe, butter, sugar, flour, baking powder, and salt. What I did with this, and it's a rollout recipe, uh, I used this to, and I added something to it. I added this ube flavoring, which is, uh, or essentially ube extract. Is it's come? It's a purple thing from a purple potato in the um, in the uh, the South Pacific, and it. I used this recipe to emulate a shortbread recipe containing this flavoring that we found at Trader Joe's, and we have not been able to find again. And it does come out really well. They're really really crumbly. So why there might be something I make again, my toddler makes a mess out of these things. But this is a rollout cookie recipe. It's really basic. It's really good. But again, it's really, really messy because it's shortbread. So let's move on. So this is creamy butterscotch pudding. I have not, I may try this at some point. It's not high on the list. Um, but uh, I've never actually done butterscotch before, so. It looks really good, so if you're into that kind of thing, it'd probably be a great recipe to try. And now we're moving on to And of the Windy Populars. So this is actually what I made for my daughter's birthday, for her birthday cake this year, which is Miss Ellen's Pound Cake. This was really good. Uh, the only thing I did differently was I did not have any vanilla, vanilla extract. I had vanilla paste. Same thing, only you get vanilla seeds. It's slightly more expensive, I think. Uh, it's really, really good. The other thing I did with this, I took this recipe, and again with the ube, which is really bright purple. <laughs> I happen to like bright purple. So I made a bright purple cheesecake for my daughter for her first birthday, which was really good. I used, uh, uh, why on earth can I remember the uh, chef's name? Giada de la Rentis, her, uh, her uh, ricotta cheesecake. And I used a specific type of uh, sweet pea flour to make it bright purple. That's what I made last year. So I took this recipe this year and used that ube to make mini, used my mini um, cupcake tins to make mini purple pound cakes, which it came out really, really good. They're not messy. So they're definitely a good travel food. So if you are familiar with watching my channel or you watch some of my travel stuff, 
this is what I did for our uh, vacation as one of the snacks that I did. I made these mini little uh, purple pound cakes to bring along. So next recipe. We've made these ones as well. This is the coconut macaroons. These are really good. They're very, very sticky. You lose, use a, basically it's a meringue with coconut in it. So it's very good, but it's again, very, very sticky. I might, I might have needed to cook these a little bit more, but they were very, very good. My husband enjoyed them, but again, very sticky. The next thing is an angel's uh, orange angel cake. So this is an angel's food cake. My husband's not actually particularly fond of angel's food cake. I made it before. I may try this again. It looks really good to me. But again, my husband's not particularly fond of food cake, Angel's food cake, because it's really sticky. And then he, he prefers the Devil's food cake, which I use Alton Brown's recipe for Devil's food cake. So this is, we moved on to the recipes from Ellen Montgomery's kitchen. So these are her stuff. And on to another recipe we actually tried. So this is Rachel Lynn's North Shore fish cakes. These were really good, though I think I got the mixture off. I wasn't paying attention. Not a perfect cook. I had too much, had too much mashed potatoes. But this is basically, it's mashed potatoes and a white fish, Dijon mustard, breadcrumbs, and basically it's a frying little fish cake. It's really good. They're very, very good. They came out decently well, but again, I needed to cut down on the mashed potatoes, so they were a little mushy for us. Definitely a great recipe. Tend, tend to try again. The next recipe is actually on our list to try this week. This is fire and dew sweet potatoes. This is a... Uh, a twice baked sweet potato. It's actually not sweet, it, uh, besides, you know, the potato part and uh, the sweet potato part. It does contain just black uh, eh, butter and sweet potatoes and an egg and uh, black salt and pepper, which is pretty common with the, if you've noticed, the most of the flavorings in this cookbook are going to roll down salt, pepper, ground mustard, and paprika, which is pretty common for this area. So the next one is Green Gables Shepherd's Pie. I may try this. Uh, this contains beef rather than, you know, actual shepherd, which is lamb. And does mention that technically this is cottage pie. But still, this is very good. If you're not familiar with a shepherd's pie is, it's normally um, vegetables and meat in a gravy chopped with mashed potatoes and baked. It's very good. It's very, very hearty. So then you have Cavendish ketchup. So this is basically a homemade ketchup recipe, which looks very interesting. I don't know if I have the time to make it, but if you're interested in making homemade ketchup, it's really good. I would assume so. And I think that's the end. Yeah, that's the end of this book. So there's not much left. Um, there's a little bit of information on the author here, who again is Ellen, Mag uh, Ellen Montgomery McDonald's granddaughter. She's the child of his youngest son, who was a doctor and she lives in Toronto. So, and then there's a picture of Ellen Montgomery herself. So that's the author when she was young and looks happy. Um, if you want to know more details about her life, check out my Anne of Green Gables videos. I cover the entire book series. Um, I don't think I actually read the last ones. I may add them at some point. Uh, very good cookbook, very country. Um, in the United States, it would be considered almost New England cooking. Again, this is from the East Coast, Northeast Coast, around Prince Edward Island, or in the case of where Montgomery lived most of her life around Ontario, Canada. So that is this. It's very, I highly recommend this cookbook, even if you haven't uh, read the Anne of Green Gables books, which I do recommend. Uh, check out my reviews. I have more explanations for that on how to read them and how to deal with those situations. Ella Montgomery was a very good author. So this is a very fun book. Um, if you haven't read the books, you can still, I still recommend this cookbook. It's that if you, particularly if you like those kind of um, lighter New England flavors that focus more on a lot of baking, a lot of vanilla and salt and pepper, not a lot of the strong hot flavors. Again, there's, I think the only peppers in here are like a tablespoon of bell peppers in that corn souffle we used half a bell pepper <laughs> because my husband likes bell pepper and I think the recipe was better for it. That's an opinion. There's a lot of baking stuff in here, a lot of biscuits, a lot of cakes, um, a lot of more hearty um, recipes that would do good in those cold um, weathers of the East Coast and the, the North Atlantic. So 
but you know the fish cakes and things why aren't you you're using canned fish when you're in New England or in this case Prince Edward Island where you're literally in the North Atlantic <laughs> I don't know they probably in real life they would have most likely used actual fresh fish not necessarily I don't know if there's salmon in the North Atlantic there may be but I think mostly it's cod but again great book fantastic recipes definitely geared toward uh, children but even I as an adult enjoy this we'll definitely be sharing a lot of these recipes with my kids and trying more of them so that is it for this review if you like what you see be sure to check out my channel I do some cookbooks mostly I'm doing children's book reviews and children's film reviews occasionally I'll lean more into some teen stuff and some a little bit more mature films but by that I mean the occasional thing that might be rated are mostly for language and history and kind of intense stuff but mostly it's family friendly I do a lot of picture books uh, I did the entire Grand of Green Gables book series I'll link it in a playlist for that here and I covered Wizard of Oz I do a bunch of some classics some modern stuff I do a bunch of stuff so be sure to like and subscribe check out my channel I have a lot more to come and I have a lot already available thank you